My name's Trish Rappi, I'm a local GP working part-time in Toowoomba. It can be really difficult to diagnose declining cognitive function in the elderly patient. Um, often the GP actually has a suspicion that something's going on but can't actually pinpoint it and is really unsure about how to assess um, their elderly patients. Mixed in with all of this is the um, legal issues of creation of a will and power of attorney. Um, there may be driving licensing issues with the patient actually still driving and you've got to decide are they able to continue driving. There's also the emotional issues and I guess as a GP, if you've had a relationship with this patient over the last 10, 20 years, there can be that grief associated with seeing their declining cognitive function. The patient themselves may actually have some insight into um, their declining cognitive function and actually be wanting to hide that, um, coupled with a fear of what the future may hold and, and I guess that awareness that something's happening but they're unable to stop it. Their spouse may be really struggling with both the seeing the changes in behaviour of their partner um, plus also the increased um, responsibilities of caring for them. And then there are the family um, issues with the families having a change in roles where no longer is the parent looking after the child but the child's having to look after the parent. So there can be a lot of emotional um, aspects to, concerning the diagnosis of dementia. And then you actually have the whole aspect of should this person be living in the community or do we actually need to start considering a residential care facility. So I'd like to just share a couple of, uh, over the next couple of minutes, um, how I approach a patient with um, declining cognitive function um, and actually how I go about assessing them. So first of all, it's really important to take a, a good history, a clinical history, both from the patient, but be aware that especially those who have been um, educated, that they may actually um, hide from you and lie about um, their their behaviour and what's happening because of the fear of the diagnosis of dementia. Um, talk to their family, um, talk about loss of memory, talk about erratic behaviour, talk about change in their, um, their emotional state and whether there's been any aggression or um, concerning psychological um, behaviour. Um, talk about how they're coping with their activities of daily living and what they're actually able to do. Can they cook their own meal? Do they got, get lost when they go shopping? Um, and sort of get a really comprehensive history. And you may actually need to talk to the family about this and, and get a really detailed history from their spouse um, or their children and maybe even their next door neighbour who's um, sort of picking up on these change behaviours. The next thing that you need to do is actually do a comprehensive physical examination. And so that's looking for things that may be impacting on their pers uh, this person's cognitive state. Um, things like do they have a urinary tract infection? Um, do they have acute um, congestive cardiac failure? Um, do they have visual or hearing loss that hasn't actually been detected and treated that's impacting? Um, are they depressed? And for that I actually do a geriatric depression scale and um, if there is depression present, treating it may make a big difference to um, their actual underlying cognitive function. I think it's then important to actually um, do a comprehensive review of their medications and stop actually a lot of the medications that may not be needed. You may actually consider a domiciliary home medicine review at this point. Um, and get a pharmacist to go into the home and, and see are they actually taking any other medications that they're not telling you about. So we've gone through these stages and, and the next point is actually doing a um, cognitive screening and th for that there are actually a, a whole heap of cognitive screening tools available um, and these are available through the GP Connections website. Um, some of these include the GP, now I'm going to just read it out because I always get confused with all the acronyms, the GP Assessment of Cognition and this is actually designed for GPs to assess the elderly patient's cognitive state. 
There's the mini mental state examination, which we're all familiar, especially those who use medical director. Um, however, I do see some limitations with that use in that patients are often um, very much used to it and so they actually, I've actually called patients in um, for their driver's licence and I always do it routinely at the time of their driver's licence and they're actually practising the answers. Um, you know, so, you know, now how, what's taking seven from a hundred? Um, and you can see them actually practising it in the waiting room. So I think it's useful to have some other tools. There's another tool called the Roland Universal Dementia Assessment Scale that's also been used in primary care for um, situations and by GPs. There's a mini COG that only consists of three questions, um, of which one of those is actually a clock drawing. And I've actually had somebody who's done success really well on a mini mental state examination. But when I asked her to draw a clock and to um, write the time at 10 minutes past um, two, um, no, 10 minutes to two, see I actually worry about this myself, she um, was unable to actually do it. She could not write. Uh, the time. And so that was an indicator that, that she's actually having declining cognitive function. There's a Montreal Cognitive Assessment that's freely available and able to be used uh, uh, in general practice. And then for the elderly Indigenous Australian, there's actually a Kimberley Indigenous Cognitive Assessment, which uses um, culturally appropriate words um, and is also sort of able to, it gives you a questioning format to be used with the families as well. So I've gone through both my um, actual using assessment tools and then we come to the investigations. The Toowoomba um, Older Persons Mental Health Unit actually have a guideline of investigations um, to do before you actually refer to them. However, I guess a basis of what I go ahead and do is actually doing an ECG to make sure there's no arrhythmia present. Um, I think it's useful to do a CT scan to actually look for any um, brain tumours, have they had a stroke, is there multi-infarct dementia present, um, to do your baseline full blood examination, your ELFTs, so looking at your kidney and your liver functions, um, looking at your electrolyte abnormalities, looking at your glucose level, calcium levels, doing B12 and folate, um, checking your thyroid function, so doing the TFTs. So I think that it's important to do both HIV and syphilis serology. Um, we recently had a patient whose behaviour was becoming more erratic and um, when we did the syphilis serology it was positive and they actually had tertiary syphilis that was undiagnosed. Um, that was just earlier this year. Um, and also just checking for a, an infection, so doing an MSU and if clinically indicated doing a, a chest x-ray. There are some other additional investigations that can be done, like a serotech brain scan. I must admit that I tend to leave those for the specialists um, because they are quite expensive. Having said that, I have actually ordered them for the younger patient, um, so the 35 year old who I've actually been concerned about their cognitive, uh, whether they've got cognitive impairment and the 50 year old who's actually got very early onset dementia. So they're worthwhile considering and being aware of but not going ahead and doing as your primary screen. So following this assessment, I guess it very much depends on what the results are and what I think is going on. You may just choose to monitor the patient, um, being aware that their um, cognitive function is declining but not needing to actually act at this stage. However, there may be situations where you actually feel um, referral to a specialist is appropriate and that may be a geriatrician, a geriatric psychiatrist or a psychiatrist. Um, and situations when that occurs is when you're dealing with a, a younger patient or a patient who's presenting atypically where you're having major problems associated with their behaviour, where you're unsure of the diagnosis. Other situations may be when they're quite complex medical conditions um, or if you're, un if you're actually looking at um, starting medication. And then those are the situations that I would actually involve um, a specialist. So hopefully this all gives you a framework of um, how to go about approaching a patient with um, impaired cognitive function, um, how to assess them, how, what tools are available and where to go from there. Thank you.